Welcome to Metal Welding Lecture Series by Professor Joyjeet Ghosh. This is the first lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on fundamentals of welding processes. He will be discussing about welding, weldability, advantages and limitations of welding, applications of welding, classification of welding processes, types of welding joints, types of welding positions and welding terminologies. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access all the videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello everybody. Welcome to this lecture series. In this lecture series we will be discussing about uh, welding of metals and there will be a series of lecture on the fundamentals of welding, the arc welding, fundamentals of arc welding, we will be discussing gas welding, gas cutting, different types of arc welding we will be discussing, sealed metal arc welding, we will be discussing about gas metal arc welding, we will be discussing gas tungsten arc welding, submerged arc welding, we will also be discussing other welding processes apart from gas welding and arc welding, thermite welding process. Uh, we will be discussing electron beam welding, laser beam welding, plas um, plasma arc welding also we will be discussing and uh, um, electro slag welding, friction star welding, uh, friction welding, um, start welding. So different types of welding we will be discussing uh, in this series of lecture but in this lecture we will just discuss, uh, we will have a brief introduction to the welding process. So let us start. So what is welding? Welding is obviously you will be knowing uh, it's basically a joining process. Uh, there can be various types of joining processes. Uh, it can be riveted joint, it can be a, a soldered joint, it can be a brace joint, it can be a bolt and nut uh, type of joint. Of the various types of joint in this lecture series we will be discussing about uh, the welding which is of course a very very important aspect of manufacturing. So let us define welding first. So a very important society is American Welding Society in respect to welding and uh, most of the nomenclature that we will be discussing will be based on the American Welding Society nomenclature and the definitions that we will be learning will be based on American Welding, how American Welding Society defines that particular welding process. So that defines, uh, this society defines the welding as a material joining process which produces a coalescence uh, of materials by hitting them to a suitable temperature. Uh, with or without application of pressure or by application of pressure alone or and with or without use of filler materials which basically means that uh, welding is basically a joining process coalescence means formation of a union so uh, in my definition welding i can define like this welding is a basically a joining process uh, of two pieces of metals by application of it of course uh, welding can be done for um, non metals also but our dis discussions will be restricted to metals so <coughs> welding is a process of joining two pieces of metals by application of heat and pressure you can apply you can may not apply depending on process to process some pr process are non pressure welding some process are pressure welding and filler materials may be applied may not be applied so one thing is important is that heat is must and you can apply pressure you may not apply pressure and you can apply the additional material in between the two metal pieces you are joining or you may not apply depending on the situation we will be doing that. <clears throat> so that is how we are joining or uh, defining the welding process. So uh, it finds uh, welding finds huge application nowadays in industries. Uh, you will be surprised to know an, uh, a normal uh, car has more than 10,000 welds. The building industry, aerospace industry, construction industry, bridge industries. Uh, so everywhere welding is an integral part because many of time we have to join two components and we have to permanently join two components. In such cases, uh, welding is very important. Let me explain. If 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 or if a pipeline carrying oil, you will be knowing that pipelines are welded. <coughs> Pipes are welded to join. And if a welding fails, you can understand the disaster that can happen. A nuclear reactor. Uh, many a times they have welded joints, a, a pipe carrying nuclear waste, uh, if they fail. So you can understand the importance of welding. So welding is a very important part of manufacturing. 
and believe me to obtain a good quality wealth is extremely difficult so there has to be a heat source a heat source may be an electric arc it may be a gas flame it may be a resistance heating laser beam it may be electron plasma arc friction so heat source may be different but we all agree that there has to be a heat source and that heat source will be used to melt the metal um, at the joint so then another term you can see the application of welding here so what are the advantage of welding compared to other joining process this advantage of welding is in comparison with other joining process so it gives a permanent joint and of course much more stronger joint uh, sometimes the welding joint can be stronger than the parent metal and some process welding process can be automated not all and often the welding is an economical way of joining components and sometimes the welding process is portable and can be used on site and very important welding is often used for repair works not only for manufacturing it is often used for repair works on particularly on site when you are working on site you don't have a very good manufacturing facility some part has broken and you want to continue the production will stop and you, you can carry out a welding and um, of the two component and um, somehow manage for a particular period of time of course that will not be a permanent solution but it gives a stop gap solution until uh, until you get the uh, replacement for that particular component sometimes the wheel wears away in a blade's a pulley um, uh, it's a rope rope wear pulley and the uh, wheel has own away you can do uh, is that you can lay extra material on the pulley using welding and uh, you can uh, start or uh, you can use the pulley again till new pulleys arrives so on site it is a it is a wonderful machine or wonderful technique to have welding <coughs> of course it has its limitations uh, of most important according to me is it is mostly dangerous and you require highly skilled operators who are certified and who have sufficient amount of experience to carry out proper welding process if it is a manual welding <coughs> and if it is a robotic welding of course it is a very very costly equipment uh, and you re require skilled operators and welding creates heat affected zone heat affected zone or uh, has as we call it uh, has to be there in welding uh, but our efforts is to reduce the heat affected zone as much as possible but heat affected zone will be there so what is this heat affected zone so when you are hitting the material the properties of the material changes where we hitting it so the amount uh, the region where the properties of the material base material changes is called the heat affected zone so this much of knowledge for the time being is good enough uh, and of course welding is fraught with defects uh, particularly if you are carrying out manual welding process so we have to do away with the defects <clears throat> and uh, of course as I have said some welding process are highly dangerous so these are limitations of welding processes so another term is very important weldability uh, as the name suggests it is the capacity of a particular material to be welded into an inseparable joints not only that it has to be welded into inseparable joints the, the quality of the weld should be good that means the weld should have uh, the specified properties and should have the definite strength and the proper microstructure and of course it is pretty obvious that uh, different metals will have different weldability some can be easily welded some it is diff some metals are difficult to weld it now what are the things on which the weldability depends there are many factors on which weldability of a metal depends it depends on the alloying elements it depends on the impurities it depends on the properties of the material uh, like thermal conductivity thermal expansion surface conditions specific heat surface tension filler material processing history gain structure melting point or melting temperature all this affect the weldability okay of course these are uh, areas of metallurgy uh, uh, which will not be exploring much but it is pretty obvious that uh, uh, the weldability depends on many factors <laughs> and but as a welder as a uh, uh, um, someone who having knowledge in welding we should be at least have some basic idea uh, which materials can be welded easily and which metal can be welded uh, to, to weld certain material it is difficult so here i have listed out you can go through this or you can refer to any books also i'm not going into this 
Uh, some materials are easily weldable. Some materials are difficult to weld. <coughs> you can refer to any 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 books on welding. Welding. You can get the weldability of different materials. So certain materials are difficult. Okay. So when you classify all welding process, basically you can classify into two categories. One is pressure welding. One is non-pressure welding. Or pressure welding or plastic welding. In pressure welding or plastic welding, we do not heat the base metal to a melting temperature. We heat it to a temperature where it becomes, uh, it reaches a massy state, and you apply pressure uh, to complete the joint. So that is called plastic welding or pressure welding, like resistance welding, thermit welding, etc. So here uh, we are not uh, welding uh, uh, it to a when we are hitting it to a plastic state, rather we are hitting it to a state where we apply pressure and join it. Thermit welding may be a pressure welding, may not be a pressure welding, but resistance welding is definitely a pressure welding process. Uh, fusion welding or non-pressure welding. Uh, in fusion welding, we do not apply pressure. Normally, we do not apply pressure. I said normally, we do not apply pressure. But the heat generated is so high to melt the base metal to form a coalescence or metal continuity. So there exists a metal continuity uh, when you are joining by fusion welding purely because of the heat melting uh, by the heat. Extra material may be added, may not be added. That is a different thing. Of course, uh, very important depending on the thickness um, of the uh, metal pieces we are joining, we may require to uh, prepare the edges. Of course, uh, before you start welding, the weld joint area has to be cleaned properly. That is true for any type of uh, welding processes. It has to be cleaned so that there should not be any any metal oxides and etc. impurities present. And sometimes you require to prepare the edges because uh, you may not complete the weld in a single pass. Now, what is a single pass? We will be discussing later on. Uh, what is a multi pass? We will be discussing later on. So you must understand that in a single go, it may not be finished. So multiple times you have to uh, uh, carry out the welding process and lay extra material. For that we require to prepare the edges. So these are the different edge preparation symbols, uh, or different types of edge preparations which are given here. Okay, now different types of welded joints. When you are joining end to end, it is called butt joint. When there is a lapping, overlapping, it is called lap joint. And uh, <coughs> at perpendicular right angle, two metal pieces that forms a corner. It is a corner joint. This is a T joint. This is an edge joint. When you are joining the edge, so this is an edge joint. Okay, so there are different types of welding joint. <coughs> so, different processes are used for different types of joints single process may not be capable of all types of joints. But most of the arc welding process are capable of all the five. So welding position uh, is like this butt welding, lap welding. Uh, you have uh, T joints, edge joint and this is welding position. So you, flat welding can be done, vertical welding can be done, horizontal welding and of course the overhead welding. So, welding can be done in different positions. <coughs> so, this is a common classification. Uh, this is a classification of some common welding process. Of course, that list is not a complete list. So, here I have uh, mostly included those processes which we will be discussing in the series, like lecture series. So, we can classify into pressure welding, non pressure welding, forge welding, resistance welding, resistance welding, so various types, bar welding, spot welding, seam welding projection welding, percussion welding and then we have uh, the fusion welding process. Uh, under the fusion welding we have gas welding. We will we'll be starting the next lecture with gas welding and gas cutting. So we have thermite welding, arc welding processes, different arc welding processes that we will be discussing manual metal arc welding, submerged, metal, uh, submerged arc welding process, metal inert gas welding, tungsten inert gas welding, plasma arc welding, atomic hydrogen welding, solid state welding process includes uh, forge welding, friction welding, friction star welding, ultrasonic welding, diffusion welding, explosion welding and certain unique or special welding processes like electron beam welding, laser beam welding, electro slag welding. So most of these processes we will be discussing in subsequent lectures so don't miss out. 
and uh, do visit and do watch the uh, series of lectures <coughs> and you will get a fair amount of idea about different welding processes okay so this is a comp comparison this i have taken from the kalpak jain book uh, it shows different uh, joining process compares different joining processes you can see the comparison from strength, design, small parts, large parts, tolerance, reliability, ease of maintenance, visual inspection and the cost. So this is a comparison of different uh, welding processes, which one is, which can be automatic, which has an advantage, uh, skill level, welding position, current type and distortions, level of distortions, cost of the equipment. <coughs> So this will give you a, a brief idea about uh, the comparison of the different welding processes. So this again I have taken from Kalpak Jain book. So here we will be discussing the various terminologies that we will be using in subsequent lectures particularly in arc welding process. So base metal, a uh, base metal is basically the two metal pieces which you are joining. Mm. Uh, most of the time it is of same material so we call that a base material dissimilar metals of course can be joined but there are certain difficulties uh, weld pass the single moment of the welding torch or electrode along the length of the joint uh, which results in a bead is called a weld pass weld bead weld bead uh, uh, is basically the additional material that we are adding during a single pass uh, <clears throat> is called the weld bead it would it should be separate it appears uh, it appears a separate matter from the base metal and the crater crater is basically when arc when we are doing arc welding uh, the arc pressure or the arc force created creates a depression in the, in the molten metal directly ahead of it and that depression is called the crater and you have deposition rate the rate at which the weld metal is deposited per unit time is called the deposition rate so it basically uh, indicates the productivity of a particular welding process how fast a welding process can be done and we have fillet welding so when you are doing corner corner joints the, <coughs> the metal fuse in the corner is called the fillet weld a puddle the portion of the base metal at the joint which is melted by the heat of the uh, during the welding is called the <coughs> weld metal puddle and weld face the exposed surface when the me weld metal has solidified is called the weld face root is two portions uh, is the point at which root is that portion at which two pieces to be joined by welding is nearest two of the weld it is the junction between the weld face and the base metal penetration is the depth up to which the weld metal combined with the base metal when measured from the top surface of the joint and tack weld is basically before you carry out uh, some permanent welding process we at different points we use tack welding to hold the workpiece in right position so that is called tack welding then we have deposition efficiency it is the ratio of a deposited weight to the melted weight now during welding process uh, uh, if you are adding extra material that is by melting a filler material or melting of the electrode the melted filler material or the electrode is deposited in between the two metal pieces to your joining now the amount of metal you are melting may not be totally deposited in the in between the two metal pieces we are joining some <coughs> some molten metal may be scattered it is called spattering and it may not be deposited in between the two metal pieces so different welding process has different deposition efficiency silver metal arc welding has the lowest one uh, similarly for gas metal arc welding gas tungsten arc welding and submerged arc welding, <coughs> submerged arc welding has one of the highest metal, depo metal deposition efficiency. And operation factor is the ratio of actual welding time to the time the welder actually spends in the welding process. <coughs> Some welding requires additional handling time um, before you carry out welding process. This also gives an idea about the welding process. Doplets of electrode material that lands outside the weld fusion area are called spatters and which may not or may or may not fuse with the base metal so you can see here you can see the spatters here in this here so these are spatters 
okay so uh, that's it for this lecture uh, we have discussed the different basics of uh, welding we have discussed the basic terminology of welding welding classifications we have discussed we have discussed weldability and uh, in the next lecture we will be actually starting discussions in welding process we will start with gas welding and oxy fuel cutting oxy gas oxy fuel welding and oxy fuel cutting so that's it for today's lecture uh, thank you for watching this video